In this video, I'm going to be explaining Backrooms Level 75, aka the Gallium Caves. This level is one of the rarest levels out there, and it's also pretty much one of the deadliest levels out there as well. This level is very disturbing, so if you enjoy that kind of thing, you're going to enjoy this one. Thank you for watching. Let's get into the explanation, shall we? Level 75 of the Backrooms, or the Gallium Caves, has been given a Class 5 survival difficulty for its very unsafe and unsecure environment, but it is devoid of entities, which is always a nice thing to not have to worry about, but the layout of the level is dangerous enough to where that doesn't matter. The level was discovered on March 3rd, 2019 by a now-deceased MEG operative, and the description of it reads as follows. Level 75 is a massive group of of narrow interconnected caves made entirely out of gallium. Now gallium is a chemical element and in this level it takes the appearance of a bluish gray metal that is very soft. In fact it's soft enough you could cut it with a knife. It's a solid at room temperature but when it's heated ever so slightly it'll melt into liquid metal. I know you didn't click on this video for science class but all of that was important trust me. So gallium is the only material on this level. There is no stone, no dirt, no rocks, no fiber, nothing else that would be in a normal cave is here. It's all gallium. And as of right now, only approximately 10 kilometers of the level have been discovered, but it could be far more expansive. We don't know. The temperature inside of the cave here varies from 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 Celsius to 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 Celsius. And it typically drops and rises in temperature every three-ish hours. That's important because the melting point of gallium is approximately 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 Celsius. And since the caves heat up and cool down, they are in a continuous cycle of melting, solidifying, and melting all over again. Just you being in the enclosed space of these claustrophobic caves with your radiant body heat is enough to start the melting process. Since humans' body temperatures are hot, you know, like over 95 degrees, we radiate a lot of heat. A lot of heat comes off of us. And if you're touching this gallium with your hands or your knees or your feet, it'll inevitably heat it up to a above 86 degrees Fahrenheit and it'll start melting. The good news is that not all areas of the level are heated and cooled at the same time, which is nice, I guess. But if you are crawling through the cave or you're walking and you start to feel gallium dripping down on top of you, you've already sealed your fate and can no longer escape. Because by that time, the cave section you're in will melt into a soupy, hot, metal goo, ultimately suffocating the wanderer under literal tons of metal. When the gallium then cools down and resolidifies, it'll be in a completely different shape. Since it always drips and melts in different ways, this means that the layout of the cave constantly changes and can't be mapped. It also means that there are wanderers alone trapped inside of the walls and floors of this cave, entombed forever in these metal graves. Well, that rhymed. That was pretty cool. They unalived alone, unable to scream for help, just slowly sinking deeper and deeper into this melting gallium liquid. Okay, with that wonderful thought inside your head, let's move on. As I said, the shape of the cave system changes because of the metal dripping and cooling in different ways, but it also does because of the strong wind inside of the level. This wind is what heats and cools down the specific sections of it, and since gallium is very bendable under heat, when the warmer air blows through the cave, it'll warp and change the tunnel's directions into completely different areas. Areas. The tunnels here are still very small, and they're typically no wider than 5 meters and no taller than 2, which at maximum means they're no taller than 6 feet tall and no wider than 15 feet wide. You might have to crawl around in several parts or hunch over if you're tall. And that's where the danger is because you really can't move fast if you're crawling. You know, you, you can't sprint on your hands and knees, but yeah, just good luck. The entire time you're exploring the level, you will experience pitch black surroundings. And if you don't bring a flashlight with you, you'll be crawling through melty metal goo with no way to see, which would probably make it even worse. This level is the only known source of gallium in the back rooms in its metal form, which theoretically it could be used for conductors or electronics or even weapons in some regard. So some people have come here with a goal to mine the gallium and take it with them to make that kind of stuff. But most of them end up getting too cocky and not making that level before it melts and they sink down never to be seen again. 
since the environment here is so harsh, not even entities can live here, which is, I guess, like I said, one less thing you got to worry about. But on that same note, there are no colonies here either. So if you do manage to come here, you are all alone in these claustrophobic caves with no map, no tools, nothing to help you get out. You, you're on your own, dude. To enter the level, you can choose one of five methods that have been found so far. The main one is you can be on level eight, which is a cave level in and of itself. You probably already knew that, but you can find a silver cave, like a silver passage in that level, walk through it, and at the end of it is a pathway to get here. Or you can pick one of the others that's listed, but those are much, much harder to achieve. And to be honest, they're not really worth it because you gotta be like way on on level like 400 to come back here, which why would you do that? That's dumb. But more importantly, to exit the level, you need to find a patch of orange gallium and touch it to be sent to level 16. Now this is the most common method, but there are three other ones that you can try to use that involve finding specific hallways and specific passages to get deeper into deeper levels, but those also require you to get deeper into this level. So that wouldn't be very smart. Don't recommend that. Find the orange patch and you're gonna escape. I think this level is genuinely such a good and terrifying concept. And it's terrifying in practice. I mean, imagine getting sent and stuck in a level where you have to crawl around in your hands and knees while every surface around you heats up because of your body weight and it eventually starts dripping on you and forming puddles of this metal that you simply will get stuck in like glue and you'll start sinking and sinking the longer and more you struggle. I think that's horrifying. Leave a like if you enjoyed it too. I think it's a great addition to the lore and I think it's an example of a level that does not need entities or something like that to be dangerous, just the environment environment here of this level makes it very, very dangerous. And I know that there's a ton of cave levels inside the back rooms. You know, I've gone over like three of them myself, but this one is so unique that I think it stands head and shoulders above the other cave levels. I might even like it more than level eight. But anyways, I, I don't want to get on a tangent or anything. Those are just some closing thoughts. Thank you for watching till the end of the video. If you did enjoy, check out my other videos since I post this stuff all the time. And while you're down there, turn notifications on if you want to be notified, maybe. YouTube tends to never send notifications out anyway, but if you want to possibly be notified, click it while you're down there. Also leave a like and check out my other channels as well if you want more from me. I have a third channel named Spoogly where I upload like internet horror and mystery and ARG and analog horror type stuff. It's really cool over there. I do like almost Windigoon style videos, but like with my own personality. I really enjoy videos over there. That's my baby channel. I'm trying to get it to 100k by next year. So if you want to help out and you want more horrifying content from your boy, check that channel. I also have Toogly, my second channel where I kind of just do whatever. It's kind of just like a random posting channel. But if you want some more funny stuff, check that one out. Nevertheless, enough shameless plugging. I appreciate you all and I love you all. And I will see you in tomorrow's video for another day of Brugmas. Peace.